These are unidentified flying objects. Are they proof that we are being visited by civilizations from other stars? Or just what are they? How long do you think we've been sitting here? Not as long as the fish. Must be noon. Feels like midnight. Now don't be so impatient, Captain. The object of fishing is to get away from the high pressures of everyday living. Now you can't do that if you're going to be hogtied to a time schedule. Captain, you're absolutely right, Sergeant. The operative word is relaxed. Seems there just ain't no place to hide anymore, Captain. I really hit these oars. I'd be able to make camp by sunset.
Professor Fiedler that reported the sighting. He's with the Hollenbeck Institute of Technology. It's outside of Salt Lake City. You ever hear of it? They don't have a football team. I know that. No, sir. It's an impressive place. Kind of small. Uh, poor man's MIT, Caltech. And he claims he saw a space vehicle 300 yards long? It wasn't actually Professor Fiedler. Good morning. It was one of his students, a graduate student named Roy Layton. Okay, 3,900 pounds of fuel, two red diagonals. Thanks, Sarge. Why don't you get buckled in while I do the walk around? Yes, sir. Captain? Yo. Why didn't this Layton report the sighting himself? Good question, Harry. It's at the top of my list. the results, Fred? Yeah. Bottom. Okay, then let's repeat the test, shall we? Okay, all the way to the bottom. Right. Professor Fiedler? Yes. Captain Ryan and Sergeant Fitz from Project Blue Book. Oh, how do you do? What could... Fred, turn that off, please. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Now, what can I, uh... Oh, Project Blue Book. Yes, of course. How do you do? <laughs> Excuse me, I sometimes get all wrapped up in what I'm doing. Is there some place we could talk privately, Professor? Oh, it's all right. You can talk in front of me. Uh, Roy told me all about it. Oh. Were you there, sir, at the sighting? You mean the alleged sighting? Correct me if I'm wrong, Major, but... You're wrong. I'm a captain. <sighs> sure. But it's still only a reported sighting until it's confirmed. That's what Blue Book's all about, isn't it? Sort of. But either way, alleged or real, you weren't there, is that right? No, he wasn't. Excuse us, please, Fred. Sure, I've got some supplies to check up on. Uh, see you, gentlemen. He's a bright student. There's a lot of rivalry there between Roy and him. Why is that? Both men are going for their master's degree in mechanical engineering, combustion efficiency. Also, both are candidates for teaching assistants. How did you get involved with the sighting, Professor? Well, Roy Layton just didn't want to contact you personally. He's that shy. He's extremely reliable, but just not very much self-confidence. He said nobody would believe him. Do you? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Where can I find Roy Layton? About 10 miles west of here, out on the salt flats. <laughs> Oh, hi, Roy. I'm Ben Ryan. Harry Fitz. We're from Roy? the book. Harry? That car sure was sifting sand. I had about 146.38 on that one. That's the average both ways. Was well, this part of your master's program? Oh, yeah, that's the best part. It's uh, combustion efficiency. That's what we're after. I, I think I see what I did wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. I lost my head. It's just shop talk. We stopped by the Institute and had a talk with Professor Fiedler. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I, I know. Look, the whole thing's so outrageous, I know you're not going to believe what I have to say. Roy, we make it a practice not to prejudge witnesses. If you don't mind, we'd like to record your statement. I was on my way home. It was late, about 1 o'clock in the morning. I was tired, but... 
didn't affect my judgment at all.
Who have you told about this besides Professor Fiedler and Fred Paisley? You met Fred, huh? Who else, Roy? Uh, just my mother. Uh, she's the only other one that knows. When did all this happen? Which time? The first time or the second time? Well, the first time was about a week ago, and the second uh, was night before last. Where did the second sighting occur? Same place as the first. Did you know they were coming back? Oh, <laughs> sure. They gave me the exact time and date. I don't think I understand this, Roy. You, you knew exactly when they were coming back, and you didn't make any attempt to take along a witness? You didn't even bring a camera? Captain, they wanted me to come alone. Frankly, I didn't even think about bringing a camera. Why did they come back the second time? They want to see if I'd follow their instructions. They weren't too pleased. <laughs> They come from another star system. Well, they're having a problem breathing our air. They want me to go before the public and tell them if they don't correct the situation, that they're going to move up their timetable and take over, even if it means using force. It's uh, right over that hill, Captain. Oh, feels a little weird. Somebody's watching us. Uh, what are you gonna be looking for? Any piece of physical evidence that'll substantiate your story. Wait, 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 sir. 
Yeah. That's where it was. It was right there when I first saw it. Let's get a shot, Sergeant. And then, uh, I turned to run. That's when the green light stopped me. Did they say if or when they'd be back again? Uh, no, not at that time. But they'll be back. No, they will. Okay, Harry. Let's take a look. Let's get some pictures before we leave and, uh, and take some penetrometer readings and take soil samples for granular construction. Yes, sir. Kevin, look at that rock formation over there. more than the Jolly Green Giant to roll them over. Hey, Captain, you're finding things, aren't you? Evidence, huh? Maybe, Roy, maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Well, it's not an exact science we're dealing with here, Roy. These samples we're taking will be sent back to Wright Pat for analysis and evaluation. Understand? Oh, I understand. It's very clear. But there's one thing you don't understand. I was here that night. And I saw it. What's your gut feeling about Roy Layton? Well, I think he's a nice enough fellow, Captain, and intelligent. But if I had to make a judgment now, I reckon I'd chalk it up to an overactive imagination. They say that goes along with genius. Could be. But until we get those test results back from Wright Patterson, I get it. That's Captain Ryan. Oh, thank you. Hello, Libby. I wasn't sure you'd still be in the office. Well, I figured you'd be sending samples back here tonight, so I thought I'd stick around for a while. <laughs> It'll be a long while. They won't be going out for an hour. I think you ought to have them with breakfast. Okay. With any luck, we should get the results back to you by tomorrow night for dinner. The sooner the better. We just got a report of another sighting. Happened last night in Provo, Utah. From the description of the vehicle, there could be a tie-in. Give me the address. We'll check it out when we finish here. It's on the outskirts of 5225 Mountain Road, and the name is Hammond. Got it. Hammond. Provo. Thanks, Libby. And thanks for staying late. Good night, boss. What's in Provo? A sighting. Tie-in, maybe. Hey, that leaves tomorrow free. There's a trout stream up in the mountains. There's also Kara Layton, Roy's mother. Lucky trout. Roy is very special. Different. As a boy, he kept to himself a lot. And books. Always studying. I think it was a way to avoid life, people making decisions. What about now? He's an engineer and a dreamer, just like his father. Well, it wouldn't be much of a world without dreamers, would it, ma'am? It depends on the dreams. Well, maybe Roy gets some of that from you. I mean, being psychic takes a lot of imagination. Roy is like his father, not me. I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to... Will you excuse me, please? Do you think it's possible that Roy might just have dreamed this whole thing up? It's entirely possible, Captain. Why would he lie? I don't know. 
unless it's to cover up the things he isn't. Well, Captain, where are we? Like the man said, all I know is what I read in the papers. Look at this. Roy Layton, Hollenbeck Institute of Technology graduate student, has reported a strange encounter with an alien spacecraft. Now, why would a purportedly shy lad suddenly decide to give that story to the papers? How's it going, Roy? Oh, fine. Just experimenting with my new carburetor design, which eventually uh, will reduce pollution. Roy, why did you give that story to the papers? I didn't. I don't know how they got it. Besides, everything that I told you, everything happened exactly the way I told you it happened. Look, as far as me wanting publicity, that's the least thing I want right now. I did not plant that story in the paper, Captain. I swear it. Okay, Roy, I believe you. Let's go, Sergeant. Captain? Let's just say I'm in a holding pattern, Harry, until we get those test results back from Mike Patterson. Captain? I'm Ann Booth. I'm a friend of Roy's. I'm Captain Ryan, and this is Sergeant I, Fitz. I know. Roy told me all about both of you gentlemen. I think you ought to know that Roy is telling the truth about that UFO. How do you know that, ma'am? Well, could we go in here and be private? Sure. What did you do to your ankle? I sprained it. Oh, I'm sorry. About a week ago, Roy brought me home from a date. It was a little after midnight when he left. He was back an hour and a half later, and he was frightened and upset. I love you, Roy. I know. And I believe you. But if you try to tell this story to anybody else, they're going to think you're mad. Yeah. I know that. Look, I just don't know. I don't know what they're going to do if I don't follow their instructions. Then don't go back there. Do you think that's going to stop them? Look, if they want me, there's no place on this earth that I can hide. Then we'll go back together. No! No! Yes, Roy, I have to. Look, Ann, if they see you out there... They might not even show up at all. <laughs> Just wait till I'm alone to get me, that's all. Well, I'll wait in the car. They won't see me if I'm in the car. At least I can be close by. All right. Don't... Don't say anything about this, will you? The next couple of days were like a nightmare for Roy. We hardly even saw each other except here at school. What happened when the time came to go out there again? Well, Roy picked me up early, just like we were going out on a date. We went out to dinner, but he couldn't eat anything. And we just drove around for a while. And then at about one in the morning, we went out to the place. Stay here. I'll leave the keys to the car. If I don't... If I don't come back, you take it and you get out of here. Okay?
whatever it was that was there was suddenly gone. Then you didn't actually see the UFO yourself. No. But there is no doubt in my mind now that Roy was telling the truth. Whenever I think this whole thing was just a dream, I have this to remind me that it really happened. I'm afraid that's everything I can tell you. That's all I know, but it's all true. Well, thank you for contacting us, Miss Booth. Um, we'll be in touch. Wait. There is something else, Captain. Is that what Roy heard that night? Yes. How did you manage to get it on tape? Well, Roy's hobby is music. He tried different timpani instruments until he came up with a set of tuned gourds. They were the closest to what it was he heard that night. And then I taped it. Have you played this for anyone else? No. Roy's afraid he'd be laughed at. You see, that's what's important. It's not what you think of me, but Roy. What this could do to his career. You see, this is the time of year when big automobile companies come out to interview candidates for important engineering jobs. The competition is pretty fierce. Roy's near the top of his class, isn't he? Yes, but they consider character and stability almost as much as they do talent. This whole UFO business could really hurt him. Is Fred Paisley in this competition? Yes, just as much as Roy is. I warned Roy not to turn his back on him. Oh, it would mean a great deal to Roy if you could confirm his story. I mean, a great deal to Project Blue Book if we could, too. I guess that just about does it, Libby. Did you check out that Provo sighting yet, Captain? No, we didn't have time to get down there today. Tomorrow, probably. Thanks again, Libby. Good night. Good night. What we got? Puzzle. Radiation negative, but the soil test indicated a small trace of fossil fuel residue. Could declassify? Yeah, fast. It's diesel fuel. Diesel? That ought to be easy enough to run down. Penetrometer readings in the soil compaction index show that a combined weight of 50,000 pounds was registered. And the indentation was made by something in motion, not standing still. Harry, you remember those tread-like marks? Yes, sir, like on a farm tractor. Operator, will you give me the Utah State Highway Commission? Thank you. Hello, sir. My name's Captain Ben Ryan, United States Air Force, Project Blue Book. Could you tell me if there's been any road construction work in the Skull Valley section of the interstate recently? I see. And thank you very much. What gives? One down, Harry. There was some heavy earth-moving equipment working the area six months ago. And you know where the equipment staging area was? Now, Roy's sightings all occurred at about the same time each morning, 1 a.m., give or take a few minutes. Right on schedule. And what runs on schedule? Operator, will you get me to Mid-Mountain Railroad Station, the dispatcher's office, please? Hello, I'm Captain Ben Ryan, United States Air Force. Could you tell me if you have any regularly scheduled traffic moving east or west on your line after midnight? Yes, sir, and thank you. That's round two, Harry. One to go. That's me again. Would you give me the Hill Air Force Base operator? Thank you. Harry, you remember our weather briefing for the flight out here? No, uh, thank you, operator. Would you bring me the Air Force meteorology section, please? Hello, Lieutenant. I'm Captain Ben Ryan, Project Blue Book. I need the lapse rate readouts for the Skull Valley area of Utah for the past two weeks. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Harry, we may just about have the whole enchilada. Maybe. What'd you find out? Odds and ends, bits and pieces. You're just gonna have to trust me, Roy. Captain Flancy can have it all together for you, Roy, at 0100 hours tomorrow morning. He means 1 a.m. That's the same time I saw them out there. Both times. And in the same place. And that's where we're going. 
What if you're wrong, Captain? What if I miss this opportunity, you know? These aliens, they won't understand. We got a pretty good batting average at Blue Book, Roy. All right. Good. We'll pick you up at 12 o'clock tonight. He means 2,400 hours, Roy. <laughs> That boulder, and those others that were moved, and the ground that was compacted by some tremendous force, there's an explanation for that, Roy. What tipped us off was the diesel fuel. Long before your sighting, this was a staging area for earth hauling equipment used to build the interstate highway. Some of those rigs have tires 12 feet high, like turning a herd of elephants loose. Oh, all right. OK. What about what I saw with my own eyes, huh? Now you give us about 30 seconds. If it's on time. Roy, look up. That little cloud layer there. Uh, there's also a double temperature inversion, just as there was in the night you had those sightings. Now, it's still hanging over. We checked with the weather station. Look, I'm an engineer. I'm not a meteorologist. Now, look up. What you're seeing is a distorted reflection of that train. I don't believe it. Come on with me, the top of the hill, fast. Now there. With a double inversion, it's like reflecting light off a series of undulating mirrors, and they keep moving. And that's what gives the wavy effect. Now, remember, there are two layers. Now, it doesn't happen very often. No. What I saw that night was bigger and brighter and more real. spread. Yes? Hello. Sir Ben Ryan, Harry Fitz from Project Blue Book. I'm Arthur Hammond. I'm glad to see you, gentlemen. Come on in. Thank you. You'll have to forgive the mess. My wife and the girls are in Europe. There's only me and Charlie. Won't you sit down? Please. Is it all right if we tape our conversation, Mr. Hammond? Oh, I don't mind. It was three nights ago. I was coming home from a meeting. It was about 10 o'clock. And I stopped at the gate to check on the mail. When out of the corner of my eye, I saw what I thought was a shooting star.
there's two, three football fields. Tell us about the sound you heard, sir. Like a heavy vibration. That's all? You're sure? Uh, not odd? Not like someone striking something hollow? Uh, a gourd? Oh, nothing like that. Besides, I was in the basement with my hands over my ears. One more question, sir. Do you know a uh, Roy Layton? No. I never heard of him. Well, we thank you very much for your cooperation, Mr. Hammond. We'll be in touch, sir. Well, thanks to you both. Goodbye, sir. Bye. Bye, sir. Bye. So, well, Captain, what was out there? Huh? Do you have any idea? No, sir. I don't. <laughs>